Awesome. Awesome. The next thing that I'll ask, I'll kind of start with before I move forward is do any of you have any like questions or things that kind of come to mind? Because the next few um, things that I've added are kind of how to have these conversations, right? Or how to introduce some of these resources. So are there any things that come to mind that kind of stand in your way, right? Or present themselves as a barrier? Like I want to have this conversation or I want to introduce this topic in the home, but this is standing in my way or this is preventing me or, or adding additional anxiety or fear. Is there anyone that has just anything that they want to share, even if you kind of overcome it, just maybe something that, that stood in the way? I do have tons think, of recommendations. <clears throat> for me, this has just been a really good spark. Um, I played tennis in college and I have a teammate who lives in the same town as me with two daughters. And being part of this just made me think that I should buy the um, Venus and Serena Williams book, one of the children's book to give to her three-year-old daughter for them to kind of read and share. Um, so now I'm pretty excited to go buy that from a local bookstore and um, be able to share that with them. And I wouldn't have necessarily um, thought of that until now. Mm -hmm. awesome. awesome, thanks for sharing. There's another question in the chat, Ebony, that's from Healy. It's, um, I struggle with how to discuss topics in a way that's appropriate for both my seven-year-old and my three-year-old at the same time. Mm. Right, and so I do have some resources I'll share and I do have um, a slide that kind of reflects right different things to consider. But I will say some of the things to keep in mind are if you start with something more appropriate for the three-year-olds, right? Like you wanna, I've learned like if I have a session and I have an eight-year-old and a you know, 12-year-old, whatever I do, I'm gonna make sure it's appropriate for the eight-year-old because I know the 12-year-old will catch on or get it. Um, making time for both of them, right? Maybe setting aside that time where you have time to do something maybe a little more age appropriate for the seven-year-old, or if that if your seven-year-old has questions that go a little deeper, right? Maybe it's all just watching a certain movie. And then at the end of that movie, having some reflection questions that the three-year-old may catch on to, but you can go a little deeper with the seven-year-old. So I think it's all about just setting aside the right time for it. Um, and then also being mindful that at three, you're, you're taking in a lot of that information. Um, so to just be mindful that you're also setting aside time to, to ensure that they're receiving the message the way that you'd want them to. Um, and I think with that, if there are any more questions, please feel free to stop me, but I can move forward to um, the tips for having courageous conversations, because I think that will kind of support, uh, support as well. Um, so one of the things um, that we, I want to encourage is to start young. Yes, that is my son on the screen. Um, for those of you that <laughs> see him, that is Mr. Daxon. Um, he was six months in this picture, so it's so interesting. He's like grown so much. Um, but these are a few of the books that I have for him that we read and that I've read to him. And I mean, he can't, he can barely talk. Like he has a few of his, he has a few of his words, but other than that, you know, but I'm still reading things to him because it's the pictures, right? It's that I see myself. And a lot of times we learn that children recognize difference and they recognize color and, and not necessarily from a race standpoint, but just the difference anywhere between the ages of four and six. Um, so it's one of those things where by the time they're, three inching into four, they're starting to recognize like, wait, that person's skin color is different than my skin color. Of course, they don't understand necessarily all the, the language and things like that. But that's why it's important to start young, because they will start to ask the questions. And so if you haven't really started to introduce them to the differences, it'll be a little harder to start the conversation. Um, always ensure that you encourage your child, encourage them to ask questions. Um, it's important that when you're doing that, that you're also like encouraging yourself. It's okay not to know something and ensure that you're teaching your child that and then take the step to learn with them, right? It's okay to admit to your children that you don't know. I think that's something that most adults or even I know I've struggled with in the past, right? Like you want to be the person that knows everything and it's okay that you don't. And then they learn that. And I think through encouraging each other, um, being mindful, I think one of the things is I shared um, in another session is like, you are going to ask questions. And 
you have to be mindful of what they see when they're around you. So it's like, if you're watching the news, right? You're watching CNN and something happens, they're going to ask, they're going to, right? And so it's not that they hide those things from them, but just be mindful that if you're exposing them to certain things, they're going to need a little bit of, you know, conditioning or questioning, you know, they're gonna need some answers and some support through that. Um, I think about a lot of the things that went on in the last election, right? And just, you know, you may have been watching TV just to see election results or, right? And then you hear like, something said in the background, or you think about what recently happened at the Capitol, right? Like all of these things, like we're just watching the daily news and then something happens and our five or six year old is there. And now they wanna know, why are people doing that? Why are people saying that? And so we have to be mindful that they're, they're definitely um, influenced by those things as well. Um, this is one that I'm very, very uh, passionate about and always like make sure we check ourselves first, right? Recognize your own bias. There is not one of us walking this earth that does not have some sort of bias or that, you know, like even the unconscious bias. So it's really important, you know, kudos to all of you for being here today. I know a lot of organizations, a lot of companies have, you know, amped up just a lot of the things that they're doing to ensure that folks are getting proper training, that they're unlearning certain things that they've learned for so long. Um, because you're only gonna teach your kids or influence them based on what you know and how you feel. So if you feel a certain way about a certain group and you're kind of even indirectly putting that energy out there, they'll take that in and they'll, they'll run with that. Um, know and love who you are. If you are not secure in who you are, your children once again will know that, they'll recognize that. It's really hard, especially as a person of color, it's hard for me to go around and teach my child to be proud of who he is or, you know, love your love the skin you're in. And then he watches me not do the same thing. It's very contradictory as well. So it's really important that we really truly know who we are, love who we are. And then we, and then it becomes second nature. It's like, oh yeah, I'm proud of who I am. And then our children see that. Racial, racial cultural liter literacy. So reading and a lot of times when we talk about books for children, we also need some books too, right? We need some alone time for ourselves. I have a few like that I just have next to me. I do have them in the slide, but I have like tons of books. This is one of my favorite. Why are all the black kids sitting together in the cafeteria? Um, it actually is by Beverly Danielle Tatum. It's a, a, it's a representation of all different cultures. And she uses that ideal of kind of being seg like segregated lunchrooms um, to bring home that point. Uh, this is one I'm sure lots of folks may have heard or seen um, lately, white fragility. Why is it so hard for white people to talk about racism? This is one of my all-time favorites by James Baldwin, The Fire Next Time. Um, it's very, it's an older read, but very short, easy. Um, and I have some more that I'll go through as well, but just make sure that you're teaching yourself, right? Like you have to teach yourself in order to be able to, to pour out into your children. You can't pour from an empty cup, regardless, right? We hear that a lot of times from like a mental health standpoint, like love yourself, pour into yourself. Same thing with knowledge, right? I can only share the knowledge I know. Um, be honest. I think I kind of mentioned that earlier. Be honest. And you don't have to be brutal. Not up front, not all the time, not with, you know, some of the younger children, but be honest. When people, when, if, a, if a child asks, you know, why does this, why did that person say that? Or, you know, just be very honest and open about what exists in this world. There are people that don't like other people because of how they look, because of who they are. It's important that we are honest with our children because a lot of times we're trying to protect them from things that unfortunately, like we just don't have the power to protect them from. Um, I'm a mom, I battle with postpartum anxiety. And I know the feeling of just wanting to protect our children and keep them innocent. That's something I hear a lot of times from parents of color. It's like, I just want my child to have an innocence and I don't want to take that from them. Um, and there's a way to do this without taking that from them, but really being open and honest. Tell stories, read books. I think because I'm an author, I'm just books, books, books. Um, be active. And that's something that um, I, I like to share. I know it's a pandemic right? It's a global pandemic and, and getting outside is not always easy or not easy for everyone. Um, however, there are many resources now that exist 
Social media is a great platform, right? To use your voice, not to argue with folks, not to, right? Like we have to learn to channel that energy um, in very positive ways. But I even shared, I think in, in one of our, our earlier sessions with the Koenig family, like host a protest in your, your living room, take pictures of your children, share them out, share them with the family, right? Share them on a Zoom call. Um, and it can be anything. It, can, it doesn't have to be like a massive ideal. It could just be, you know, it could start with like, just, you know, what is something that you don't like or right? Like we want to eat dessert for breakfast, right? Like we're going to, we're going to talk about that, that and, and scream that and yell that. And then as you move forward, how do we, how do we advocate for folks, right? A lot, lots of things when the Breonna Taylor murder took place there were lots of resources online of how to use your voice, how to be active, calling your local uh, politicians and, and, and speaking up. And so I think it's really important that we're active in ways so that when our children see us, they know, right? Like, oh, that's, that's what you do to help and support other people, right? That's how I lend my hand to a friend that may not look like me or may not come from where I come from. Um, so that, and then last, patience is key. Be patient with yourself, have grace, be patient with your children, um, and just be patient with the world, right? Like so much is going on and sometimes it's too much, right? We all got hit like really hard lately. It was a lot for many of us to, to digest. And so it's like, it's okay if it takes you a little longer to have the conversation. It's okay if you don't get to it today. It is like, it's okay. You have to make sure you remind yourself, of course, don't put it off forever, but it's just okay. If you come in and you're burnt out and, and you want it to start the conversation or you want it to move forward in that and you just don't have the energy to do it, don't do it. Take that time for yourself and, and just really be patient. Um, I see lots of things happening in the chat, so I just wanna pause. <laughs> I don't know question. if it's just like insight or questions. We have a great question. So from Kate, so she says that she's an aunt, not a mom, except a mom to her dog, which does count. <laughs> um, so she's wondering if you have any recommendations on how to have these conversations, I'm assuming with her niece or nephew, um, and not being the parents. She doesn't want to um, disrespect the parents, but she wants to be a good role model for her family. So any suggestions on that would be helpful. Yeah, I think one of the things that is really helpful is just like taking what you learn, like even in these spaces and kind of sharing that out. So if it's with your brother or sister or, you know, whoever it is, um, just kind of like, hey, I have some book ideas in mind or, you know, kind of you can do it through gifting, right? I have a new book for my nephew, right? And, and whatever that book is, kind of let them know like, hey, it's a book about this. And I think it's really important that we start to have these conversations. I'd love to be a part of the conversations. If you're still in a, you know, like the virtual space of things, like let's have a book club, right? Let's start a book club. And I don't know how old your nephew is, but you know, of course an age appropriate book, but even if you're not able to physically be there and read it with him, you can still go through the book with him on FaceTime or, or, or Zoom or a platform. Um, I think that's one of the ways I even like, uh, I think, is it Stevie Evans? I'm, I'm just calling you out how you mentioned, right? Like you thought about the Venus and Serena book and it's like, oh, I'm gonna gift this to her and I'm gonna give this to her. And the, the connection is right, is the sport connection or we play tennis, or our children play a sport together and it's very indirect, right? It's just, I want to share this with you, but it's also proper representation of two amazing tennis players, right? That happen to be strong, beautiful Black women. And now I can share this with you. So I think it's all just about that intentionality and knowing that it takes a village, right? So even if you're not a parent, right? Like we're, we're all a part of that village. And it's, it's really important that you're pouring in and then ensuring that your brother or sister, you know, who the relative um, has the support they need to, you know, maybe it's saying like, hey, come join Koenig. They have the, right? Like they have these awesome resources for parents, right? That, that I think you would benefit from. And then that way we both can continue to pour into my nephew or niece or whoever that is that needs that support. Thank you.